Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the BSA Supersport SE brake barrel springer on test. But before that, I make targeting rabbits with the ATN X Site 2. I'm out after rabbits this evening. Now, I've shot this permission very hard over the last few weeks, and as a result, the rabbits have got pretty skittish, to the point that they're not really showing themselves too much during daylight hours. So this evening, I've kitted up with the ATN X Sight, which is a great digital scope. Um, obviously, it's got that night vision capability, but it also produces a pretty good color image by daylight, so it should serve us fairly well during the next hour or so before night closes in. Gun choice this evening is the Brocock Bantam. Um, it's a gun I've been using a heck of a lot with night vision over the last few months, and it served me ever so well. It's got a massive shot capacity, certainly far more shots than I'm ever likely to be taking this evening. And with a silencer on, it's very quiet. Um, this is the 177 legal limit version. Another feature I really like about it is the multi-shot, 10-shot magazine, which means when I'm shooting in darkness, as I will be tonight, I'm not fumbling around trying to find pellets when I need to reload. Although we may have a bit of a stalk around, the main plan for this evening is to target a couple of warrens where I know there are still a few rabbits about. And seeing that the grass here is very, very short, my plan is to get down on my belly, shoot from the prone position. So I've popped a bipod onto the gun just to give me that extra stability a rock steady shooting platform if opportunities do present themselves. So that's enough chat, let's get cracking. Well, I'm gonna make a start from this spot, mostly because the rabbits have been fairly active here during my previous visits. Now the lie of the land is pretty good here. Um, there's cover on the opposite side of the paddock between about 20 and 40 metres from where I'm going to set up, which is perfect range for picking off those rabbits as they emerge. Um, also, it's relatively flat and the grass here is very, very short, so I have no concerns about the pellet staying up above those stems once I'm shooting from the support of the bipod. I've timed this evening's session so that I've arrived just before dusk starts to set in. It's been quite a warm day and I don't expect the rabbits to really start showing themselves until the temperature starts to drop and the evening dew softens the grass, which should encourage my quarry to come out and feed. The Excite 2 is a very simple scope to use. A few tweaks to set the zoom and the focus and we're ready for action. This setup has already proven itself on numerous occasions, so I've got plenty of confidence in it. All we need now is for one or two rabbits to show themselves so I can put it to use. And it turns out that we don't have to wait very long. That got us nicely off the mark. But half grown rabbit, it's probably just over 20 metres away. Now I've got this zeroed at 40 metres. It's also smack on at 20 metres. In between it rises up a little bit high. But it meant I could aim pretty much dead on for that one. Nice clean kill to get us started. As the evening sun sinks ever lower, my expectation is that action will steadily increase. There's very little I can do other than stay put and hope that more rabbits show themselves, and that I don't get too uncomfortable before they do. 
just as the light really starts to fade, I clock a rabbit that's ventured out from the hedgerow. It's in range and in my sights. Well, a slightly bigger one that time. Slightly further away as well. Probably about 30 metres. So I actually had to give that shot a little bit of hold under, but it found the mark, really solid smack to the head and a really good clean kill. I wait it out until evening eventually turns into night. Time to switch the Excite 2 over to night vision mode. You can see a lot of light from the illuminator, but that's because we're using an NV camera. It's invisible to our quarry. Right, well as you can see, night's completely closed in now. We've gone over to the night vision camera. Haven't seen anything here since those first couple of rabbits during daylight. So what I'm gonna do now is pick them up and we'll move on and try another spot. You'll see that I've remembered to bring a torch with me. Conventional illumination is nothing like as stealthy as night vision gear, but it makes life a heck of a lot easier when you're moving around picking up shot quarry. This rabbit may only be half grown, but it's destined for the pot. So I squeeze it down its belly to empty its bladder. This helps to prevent any urine from tainting the meat. Tonight's haul will be paunched at the end of this session. It's the same treatment for this rabbit, and there's a lot more in this one. Once it's empty, it goes into the backpack with the other one to keep my hands relatively free as I continue on my way. There's just about enough light from the sky for me to be able to find my way around the fields. So the torch goes off to reduce the chance of being spotted by those rabbits. The key to hunting on the move like this is to stop and scan every so often. So you can check ahead for any rabbits that might be out feeding. I've clocked a rabbit through the Excite 2. It's pushing the range a bit, so I want to creep in a little closer just to be certain. Once I've got to where I want to be, I decide to go prone so I can take full advantage of the bipod and go for the added insurance of a rested shot. And it's another rabbit to the ATN Brocock combo. So I head in for the retrieve and flick on my torch so I can see what I'm doing. You're getting to see the action in night vision, but it's too dark for me to be able to see in much detail without the light on. Well, that one was a nice bonus. Wasn't really expecting to get stalk within range of any, but as we've been walking over here, I've been stopping for the occasional look. Spotted that one, it was slightly out of range. Crept in a little bit closer, got the shot at about 30 meters. So again, I was just aiming a touch low. Another good kill. I did have the recorder going then. Footage, I don't think it's going to be great. I, there's a problem with the illuminator and I think it's probably my fault. Last time I was out with this setup, I was shooting rats and I've got the illuminator set on quite a dim wide beam so it looked pretty murky to me I wasn't going to mess about with it then because I didn't want the rabbit going in while I was fiddling around so we've got the kill and I hope you had something to see from it
Even if that illuminator wasn't set to its optimum potential, I'm well pleased to have put another rabbit in the bag as we head across to our final destination for tonight's session. Now that I'm settled into position, I can tweak the illuminator so it's working as it should be. The problem wasn't so apparent earlier as the Excite was drawing illumination from the lingering glow from the evening sky. Right, I've picked a spot that I know from past experience puts me quite comfortably within range from where I expect those rabbits to emerge from cover. I've also had, the, had a fiddle with the illuminator and I've got that running at a much better level now. So if I do get some shots, they should look clearer than that last one. And sure enough, it's looking much better as I get the next rabbit of the night in my crosshairs. There's another one. Um, estimate that one at probably about 25 metres. And it looked like a much clearer sight picture. Now I've got that illuminator sorted out. The Excite 2 soon picks up something else moving in the dark. But it's not what I want to see. just having a scan around and spotted that fox up on the skyline it was staring straight back at me now that doesn't surprise me we're making quite a bit of noise here now obviously a fox is an air gun quarry and that one wouldn't have been a safe shot with something more powerful because it was up on that skyline but 50 meters it looked very clear and if it had been a safe backdrop with something more powerful that fox would have been a pretty straightforward shot. Even with that fox eight on the move, it's not very long before another rabbit shows itself. Right, we've got a rabbit out. You can probably see from the footage that it's much sharper than the previous ones, and that's because I've got the scope on a much lower magnification because I'm using it for spotting. When it's on higher magnification it tends to pixelate, but I do prefer that precision of the higher mag when I'm taking shots, so I'm going to zoom in and we'll wait for that one to present itself where I can get a clear shot. best part of 35 meters away it's a really good solid smack to the head but it did look like being a runner initially I thought it was going to run back into the hedge but it flopped back out expired pretty swiftly so that's another one in the bag right well we've given it a fair crack since that last rabbit but we've not seen any more Time's going by now, it's getting late. We've both got early starts in the morning, so I'm gonna wrap it up now and head over, pick up the couple of rabbits that we have had from here and head for home. Another interesting session with the night vision gear there. And now it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. MTC Optics are entering a new era. At a busy press event at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, the company launched no fewer than four new scopes. It's restored the Mamba Lite to its range, added two new models of Mamba Pro, as well as introducing a fixed mag scope. Sales director Terence Logan told us more about the company's plans. Uh, marking a new start, uh, looking back at the past in some ways and moving on to the future. 
Uh, we now have 15 scopes in the range, as you can see, from not just the sales but also the Optizan range as well, which you distribute, which we feel gives a full picture of where we need to be in the marketplace. We have a Mamba Pro, two new replacements, uh, three new replacements, man, for the Mamba Pro range, with a change uh, slightly on the on the turret system. Um, so before, obviously, you had the coin turrets. Now it's more click turrets, so it works a lot more smoothly. We're relaunching the 10x44 fixed magnification lens, which we launched three months ago, and a product which we had in the past, which we stopped making, which was the Mamba Light. The main difference between before and now is we now have an illuminated reticle. So that's illuminated from the sun. We've fitted into the side parallax, so it's now an illuminated reticle, uh, which we didn't have before on that lens. But that was something that everyone was being asking us, when's this coming back? Uh, so we brought it back. Elsewhere, the game fair at Hatfield House has been hailed a huge success. With 8% more visitors than last year, the event united town and countryside crowds and hosted a thriving egg in section too. Among the highlights for egg owners were Virac's new HW100 with Ambi stock, the Sheridan Cowboy Revolver at the ASI stand, and ATN's Laser Ballistics 1000 rangefinder. Knives are in the spotlight after the government introduced plans to ban the remote sale of all knives, including hunting knives. If the plans go ahead, any knife bought online must be transferred face-to-face -face after an age check. It's not clear how online-only retailers who don't have a physical premises will be able to comply. A consultation on the plans begins later this year. And finally, issue 99 of Egg and Shooter magazine is on sale now. Inside this packed issue, there's a comprehensive guide to tuning up your rifle and scope setup and fixing common problems. There's all the information you need to start your own airgun club, a farmyard pest control mission, and all the latest gear tested. Airgun Shooter is on sale now in Good News Agents, or get it online at myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. That was the Airgun Show News. We've got another BSA Springer on test this week. This time it's the Supersport SE, a very solidly constructed brake barrel. This air gun produces power close to the UK legal limit and has a price tag of just £233. The Supersport may be a no frills brake barrel, but its build quality appears to be very good. It's a well engineered air gun and although the finish of the metalwork isn't the most lustrous I've ever seen, it's certainly up to a standard that I'd expect to find at this price point. This BSA isn't really an air gun for young shots or shooters of smaller build. At 109cm long and with a 35cm length of pull, it is quite big. And it weighs just over 3 kilos before you fit a scope and mounts. That said, it handles well and does feel very steady on aim. Although the ambidextrous beach stock looks quite basic, it's actually very well designed and makes for an extremely comfortable hold. The pistol grip doesn't have the steepest of rakes to it, but it still sets you up nicely for the trigger. And I really like the thumb scallop that's been cut out behind. It makes for a really comfortable thumb up hold. The forend section is well proportioned and is adorned with panels of checkering on either side, as is the pistol grip. It's not the sharpest checkering in the world, but it's sharp enough, and I think it really helps to enhance the gun's looks as well as improving grip. Although the relatively low cheek piece is designed for use with open sights, it's quite high enough to give good eye alignment with a telescopic sight as long as you steer clear of very high mounts. The cushioned recoil pad on the butt end makes the Super Sport nice to shoulder, but it doesn't have to do a lot of work because the recoil really is quite modest. The Super Sport SE is fitted with BSA's famous cold hammer forged barrel, which is renowned for its accuracy performance. It's adorned with the front element of the open sights, but that's easily removed should you want to fit a scope and replace it with a silencer. The post and notch open sights are of the fibre optic variety and they really do glow in most light conditions. They make for fast target acquisition and are easily adjusted for windage and elevation via the rear element which can also be removed. 
It's great fun shooting the Supersport SE with open sights, especially when you're plinking, but it's easily accurate enough to justify splashing out on a set of tellies. And fitting them is no trouble at all, as there's a long dovetail rail which even features a hole to accept an arrestor pin or screw. Cocking the Supersport does take a fair amount of strain, but then it is producing power over 11 foot-pounds. It is a very smooth cocking stroke though, and it's assisted by the leverage of that long barrel. Just remember to keep your fingers well back so they can't get pinched between the barrel and the stock. As you'd expect with a brake barrel, loading is direct to breech. Swing back the barrel and it snaps into a very secure lockup. It really is rock steady and I can't see it getting slack in a very, very long time. The two-stage trigger really is one of the best that I've ever encountered on a gun at this price. Straight from the box, this one has a fairly light, long first stage which comes to a positive stop before braking very predictably with absolutely no creep. Some may find it a little heavy, but I reckon it's just about perfect for a springer. The manual safety catch looks pretty basic, but it's very well positioned and I really can't fault it in operation. The gun's safe when it's in the rear position and then you nudge it forwards when you're ready to shoot. So the BSA Supersport SE has all the credentials to be a great performer. Let's cut to the range and I'll show you what it shoots like. That's not bad at all. For a relatively affordable Springer, I really am surprised at just how little kick there is. It is very smooth to shoot. Now, add to that that predictable trigger and the cold hammer forged barrel, and it is pretty accurate. Now, the 2.2 caliber test gun has just turned out a group at 25 meters that I am very pleased with. I think I might have pulled the fourth one off a little bit to the right, but I think that was more my doing, so I'll certainly take that. I reckon the BSA Super Sport SE is a great all-rounder. It's a fun gun to use for plinking, but it's also got the grunt and accuracy to deliver the goods in a wide range of hunting scenarios. You really do get a lot for your money with this air gun. Look out for the new and improved air gun shooter magazine. Packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.